lifestyle change. And the biggest question is, are you ready to choose life? You see, life and death isn't just a matter of here one minute and then dead the next, because you can still be walking dead. And many believers are. And so I'm saying today, wake up, wake up. Because when you get this, it's, in, it's right here, Exodus 15, 26. If you, when you say, you know what, I'm going to live a life that's righteous so, uh, according to God's word, guess what? Your life will change. Your life will change in abundance. And I'm going to tell you all the ways that it will. And I'm going to hope that I have enough time to get to that today. Now I want to continue on here. In Psalm 107, 19 to 21. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them at from their distress. So guess what? They went to God. Are you going to God in your distress? He saved them. He did. It also says he healed them as well. He healed the land. He will do that for you. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. So you see there is a way out and it is through Jesus. Nobody gets through the Father but through me, so says his word. Not me, but he, Jesus. So every single thing that you need is in his word. When I shared with you that there, that there was this big knot, did it freak me out? Yeah, for a minute, so I said, oh, I'm not receiving this. I send it back right now. Mm -mm. And if I had to be in prayer for the next 35 days and fast, no problem. Because I am not going to live with something that is not of him. And neither should you because you are worth more than that. He continues on to say, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. So, lots of stuff going on here. Lots of stuff that is for you. They cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them. What are you waiting to be delivered from? Is your unforgiveness killing you? Is your unforgiveness killing you? Isn't it time to lay it down? I mean, think about that. How many years do you want to drag, like, oh, I've got to carry this unforgiveness. Oh, and it's like, it's like I could have brought all the suitcases of it that I used to have with me. It'd be like so many of them. Yeah, but we have all this baggage that we carry around, and it's like in our gut, we like leaky gut syndrome, and we got, we got vomiting of the verbal, verbal mouth, all this stuff coming out, right? But yet, why? Because we're, we're living in all that stuff. Isn't it time for you to say, you know what, I've had enough. I've had enough. Forgiveness is the cheapest weight loss and greatest facelift, or cheapest weight loss and greatest facelift, however I've always said it in the past. It will lift your face and you'll lose weight. Greatest weight loss, cheapest facelift. That's what it is. And looking at that, that's what you deserve today. Don't let the bondage of the past free you. Because here's the thing, and you may say, well, it's hard. You're right, so what? Because here's, here's the thing. God's word gives you every single thing you, that you need to do, every single thing that you need to do. Here we go. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things in Christ who gives me strength. It doesn't say some, it says all. Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches in his glory of Christ Jesus. So you can do all things in Christ who gives you strength, and he will meet all your needs. So if you need strength, he's already got you covered. And then Deuteronomy 31, 6 tells us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So you see, in the midst of everything that you're going through, he is there with you. Every single time, he is there with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. But have you left him and forsaken him? Have you left him to go run to the world way to figure out how to live? And then God is like, here I still am. Everything you need is right here. Peace among you, yet you reject it not. See, imagine this. Imagine if Adam and Eve learned the lesson of forgiveness. Where would we be today? Imagine if when, when Eve, see, it was God who commanded Adam to protect everything in the garden, and Adam failed. Now, I'm not coming against Adam, but, you know, we, everybody blames Eve, and, you know, we can still look at this in society today. But here, here we go. If there was forgiveness between the two of them, would there be the blame that we have today? Would women be the blame of so many things in society? Would we hear the, oh, she talks too much, and would we hear he never listens? Because once you forgive, the issue is not an issue anymore. But yet we've seen generations and generations and generations living it out. Would women put men down because women pride themselves on being so independent? Or through forgiveness, would we recognize that men need women and women need men? 
and that children need mothers and fathers. So when we look at this, getting our lives in alignment requires each one of us to do something about it. And as each one of us do something about it, it puts us more in line with his word. And as we get more in line with his word, things change. Your community will change. Your family will change. Your relationship with Christ will change. Your nation will change as you make the choice to say, you know what, I'm going to live in accordance with God's word. See, it'll be amazing what you can accomplish. But see, here's the thing. John 15, 5 tells us, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you, see, it goes back to the if you, remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So are you struggling trying to do all things in your own strength? Or are you getting the severity of God's word and how when you align yourself in relationship with him, you have everything that you could ever want to dream of? But you see, when we look at this, a lot of times we listen for the main point. And while you may listen for the main point, oh, that you'll bear much fruit. Yes, you can bear much fruit. But then we miss that I am the vine, you are the branches. He's the vine. If you remain in me, so it's all conditional upon you. And, you know, there was a time in my life where, where oh, I prided myself. I have all these degrees and all this education. And, 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 then, and then I was actually shown how ignorant I really am in so many areas. And so I had a situation with the law firm years ago. And someone said to me, you know, you, don't, well, you never learned how to read. Now, that might have sounded very insulting. He said, but in all your education, they never taught you how to read. I bet you were probably taught, listen for the main points. Yeah, read for the main points. Yeah, but here's the thing. When you listen for the main points, you miss the details. It's in the details that change everything. You can be a citizen in the United States, or you can be a citizen of the United States. The word if, in, and of changed the entire meaning. And when I understood the details of the words and how to read for the details, I started understanding God's word in a different way. And by the way, I, I had victory. I had major victory. And it was wonderful because God did it. But you see, here's the thing, is that it's these tiny words, which is why 20 minutes ago I focused on the if you read closely, pay attention, if you, to the voice of the Lord your God. Because it is doing those tiniest of things that will change everything. You can be on the offense or you could be on the strategic offense. There's a difference between the two. If you remain in me, if you, which means it's your choice. See, it's your choice. Are you going to be, if you remain in me, if you, you don't have to. You, you don't have to remain in him at all. It's your choice. And that's, that's where we skip that. Because we, oh, well, you'll bear much fruit. Well, why aren't you bearing fruit? Because you chose to not remain in him. And see, here's the thing. Apart from... Me, he, you can do nothing. This is why we need him. You can't get to a place of true forgiveness without him because he is the very foundation of forgiveness. Could you, who, how would you even seek forgiveness when he wouldn't be there from the beginning? It wouldn't, there's, it's not even possible. Without him, we don't bear fruit. How can you get over yourself without him? If you don't have him, you don't really die to self. You just elevate self and live more for you, which obviously is not in accordance with his word because his word tells us that you shall have no other gods before me. So if you're idolizing yourself because you think you don't need him, then you've made yourself an idol, which then you now think that you need him not. And when you suffer that fall, you may recognize how much you need him.